let's learn a fascinating fact about an amazing curve. Imagine a circle lying on a flat line. Let's label one point on the circle that's tangent to the line, and let's start rolling this circle over and over and over again. If we trace out the path traversed by the red dot, we get this curve here. This curve is known as the cycloid, and it will continue forever as long as we let the circle roll. But we can see that the cycloid is really one curve repeated over and over and over again. So let's study this one section of the cycloid and see if we can find something interesting about that particular curve. So assume that we have a circle with a radius of r, and we label one point right at the bottom of the circle tangent to the surface on which we roll. We roll the circle exactly one full turn to create one portion of the cycloid as shown here. One question of interest about this curve is can we find the area contained underneath the cycloid and above the line upon which we rolled? That is, can we find this area in terms of the radius of the circle that we rolled? We know that the distance between the two endpoints of the cycloid is 2 pi r because it corresponds to the circumference of the circle we rolled. We can take the circle we rolled and place it in the middle like this, and the circle covers some of the area. It also splits the rest of the cycloid into two symmetric pieces on either side. But now we do something interesting. We apply the two-dimensional Cavalieri's principle. To do this, we will go along each of the two symmetric shapes on either side of the circle, and we will take the width of the shape at a given point and shift it over to the left, as shown here. Because we keep the widths the same at each point and don't change the height, the resulting shape that arises out of this process will have the same area as the shape we started with. It might not seem any easier to find the area of these resulting shapes, but now we can apply another property, the symmetry of the circle. If we draw the lines coming from the center of the cycloid to the top of these new shapes, we see that because of the symmetry of the circle, this area above the line matches the missing area below the line, and likewise this happens on the other side as well. After applying Cavalieri's principle and the symmetry argument, we see that we've decomposed the area under the cycloid into a circle of radius r and two triangles of height 2r and base pi times r. The area of the circle is pi times r squared. The area of both of the triangles is also pi times r squared, so the area under the cycloid is 3 times pi times r squared, where r is the radius of the circle rolled to create the cycloid. This is a truly amazing fact. The area under the cycloid is three times the area of the circle rolled to create the cycloid.